Thank you.
everybody, welcome to Journey Church at home. Glad you're with us today from wherever you are, the comfort of your home. We're glad we can worship together with you in just a few moments and we're gonna share uh, a message together with you in Kingdom Partners. We got lots of things happening, but why don't you join with us as we go into worship right now.
is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the lamb, the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains and every knee bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome your name is life forever lifted high your name cannot be overcome your name is light that the shadows can't deny your name Come. Your name is life forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. It cannot be overcome. Jesus, Jesus, you may. Silence me, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, 
As I reflect, I find perspective They're in the best, the worst days of this life You were always on my side You're in the pain, you're in the promise And on the days the furnace finds my faith You're the fourth within the flame I don't need to know what the future said Cause if the past could talk it would tell me that My God isn't finished yet If he did it before he could do it again So I'll trust him in what comes next For the God I know is known for faithfulness yeah, my hindsight says I can trust Him with what's next. For the God I know is known for faithfulness. There's more ahead than what's behind me. And through the highs and lows and in between. God, you go ahead of me. And when you call me, I will follow. And if the water falls beneath my feet, then you pull me from the deep. I don't need to know what the future said. Because if the past could talk, it would tell me that my God isn't finished. If he did it before, he could do it again. But I'll trust him in what comes next. For the God I know is known for faithfulness. Hindsight says I can trust him with what's next. For the God I know is known for faithfulness. God isn't finished yet. If he 
did it before he could do it again so i'll trust him in what comes next and my hindsight says i can count on this my god isn't finished yet if he did it before he could do it again so i'll trust him in what comes next for the god i know is no for faithfulness yeah, my hindsight says I can trust Him with what's next. For the God I know is known for faithfulness. You know, I love it that we get to do this together. I love that we get to worship together. And there's something about the Spirit of God, no matter where you are, there are no barriers, no boundaries. But I want to welcome you. If this is your first time with us, we'd love to connect with you. Uh, I am Pastor Dave, lead pastor of the church, and so thankful that you're able to join with us today. Listen, if you want to know more about us and about what's going on as a church, uh, simply you can just connect with us, connect at myjourney.church. Uh, send us an email, let us know how we can serve you best. Go to our website, myjourney.church. We've redesigned, revamped our whole website. Lots of information and resources for you to find out how you can connect with us in ways that make sense to you. So, I don't know if you noticed, but coming up, we've got some interesting things coming up down the pipeline. But before I get into any of that, you know, I want to just say thank you. Thank you for serving. Thank you for being a part of this community. Thank you for financially contributing to everything that's happening here uh, locally and globally. We can't do it without you. So we've made it very simple for those who want to uh, continue to be generous with us today. Uh, we just go online, find the Tithely app and uh, find a way and a method that makes sense for you as you give generously to this ministry. As we just continue to uh, go into our series, part two in Kingdom Partners today, I'm joining with Jackie and Laura. We're gonna continue sharing what God has put on our heart as a church to reach around the world. So let's go into that message right now. Welcome to week two in our Kingdom Partners series, and uh, I'm here with Jackie and Laura. And today we want to continue talking about Kingdom Partners. What is this all about? You know, last week, if you missed last week, you can go online. Make sure you listen in. Now, don't do it right now because you want to, you don't want to miss this. But make sure you listen to what the vision is behind Kingdom Partners. Why? What is this all about? And and truthfully, let me just give you the summary of Kingdom Partners. Essentially, we want to be the hands and feet of Jesus in very practical ways. We're trying to raise support. We're trying to care for people locally, globally, uh, humanitarian needs, people who are in need all around the world, and future leaders. We believe in leadership. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to make sure that we're doing our part. So our goal for the year is $50,000. And the ladies are going to talk about that a little bit today. But we want to introduce you to some of our partners, some of the people that have boots to the ground, so to speak. They're doing it. How do we support them? How can we help them in a greater way than we are today? Yes. All right, let us know. Yeah, thanks, Pastor Dave. Yeah, so hi, Journey Church. We are so excited to be here, and it's been such an honor to help lead Kingdom Partners at the church this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've been able to talk to our partners, both local partners and international partners, and really get to know them. And it's been very inspiring, very eye-opening, yes. very exciting. 
Um, so, Jackie, you want to share a little bit about today's service? Yeah. So, today, like Pastor Dave said, today's entire service is dedicated to introducing you, all of you to our partners, both local and global. We want you guys to get to know them because we're hoping in the near future we have the option to travel and go abroad mm -hmm. and eventually meet with our partners face to face. And when that time comes, which we're praying is soon, yes. we, want you all, we want you all to know them quite well. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. so we're going to start by sharing a little bit about what we do to serve and love our local community. Um, Kingdom Partners, uh, partners with the Pregnancy Care Center and the Mustard Seed for various different projects they have. We also are involved in organizing cell phone drives, um, out of the cold programs for those experiencing homelessness, food drives um, for families that are in need. Um, we have a ministry called The Table, which is really cool, where we are uh, offer meals to university students and show hospitality in that way. Um, and we don't share all of this to boast about our outreach as a church. We share all of this to show you that your tithes and offerings are funding some really cool projects, and this is just part of the list of all the impact we're able to have locally. Um, there's also two local ministries that we support um, in a long-term way. We give them monthly donations. We really believe in what they're doing. Um, many of you will already be familiar with these with these projects and we just wanted to share. So Jackie, do you want to share about UCM? Yeah, the first one is called University Campus Ministries. And I know a lot of you are already familiar with this, but University Campus Mil Ministries, or I will refer to it as UCM because it's a bit of a mouthful, <laughs> but they work to relationally mentor and equip university students in serving Jesus, both on their campuses and around the world. And we support two local missionaries who are uh, chaplains with UCM, and their names are Kelly Johnson and Phil Odd. And many of you know these two men, you know their families, they've served quite closely with our church, and they're, for a lot of us, they're good friends. So we really believe in the work that UCM is doing. They do amazing work to mentor and to reach out to our young people in our city who are searching for truth and they're searching for answers. Uh, both Phil and Kelly do a lot of work organizing monthly worship nights and teaching nights that go across all of the campuses in Calgary. And actually in COVID, they have gone online, but because we serve such a good God, it's actually expanded their ministry. The last one we had a few weeks ago, uh, we had people tuning in from Brazil and America and all mm -hmm. over the world, which is so wild. We serve such a good God. And they also have a really cool ministry called the, um, the Friendship Program, which offers international students the ability to have home-cooked meals from uh, families. So if that's something that you are interested in, we encourage you, if you know Kelly or Phil, to get, in connect or get connected with them. And if you don't, you can message Pastor Dave or uh, Laura and I, and we will get you connected because it's such an important ministry to care for those who are like here and they don't have community. Yeah. Laura, do you want to share about our other local ministry? Yeah, sure. So Next Step Ministries is the second local ministry that we support. Um, they've been operating in Calgary for 20 years now, I yeah. believe, which is really cool. Um, Next Step Ministries has a mission of helping local women exit sexual exploitation. Mm -hmm. Their services offer a safe place for women who want to exit exploitation, and they work with um, like-minded local agencies and, and um, organizations to ensure this support is made really accessible. Um, they're intentional about teaching spiritual truths and sharing the gospel with any of their program participants, and this is something that many other shelters and programs in Calgary don't offer. So it's really cool that Next mm -hmm. Step Ministries fills that gap to provide relationally focused, holistic, spiritual care to these women. Um, today, Next Step Ministries has two safe homes here in Calgary, as well as a day program for women um, in their program, as well as um, they run a follow-up support program for their alumni. So they really do have that continuity with their participants, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Within the past year, Next Step Ministries has launched a social enterprise called For the Sparrows. Um, the women in their program are involved in the production line of their products and so are able to have survivors of sexual exploitation are able to have safe employment through this 
social enterprise. So we want to encourage you. Christmas is coming up. Yes, um, right. Lots of reasons to buy gifts and home goods are coming up. So we want to encourage you to check out For the Sparrows yeah. online before you shop from somewhere like Indigo or, or Amazon because your purchase could have so much more mm -hmm. impact um, shopping from there. Social enterprise, it, same thing with UCM. If you want to volunteer with Next Step Ministries, check out their website, chat with any of us. We can point you in the right direction for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so last week, Pastor Jess and Pastor Dave discussed discussed Acts 1-8, where Jesus directed his followers to be his witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So if you miss this, like Pastor Dave said, we encourage you, not now, but after this, to go back and watch that sermon and kind of just get up to date on our vision for Kingdom Partners. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, we want to introduce you to our partners that work at the ends of the earth also known as our international missions partners. The ways God is using them is really, really cool. So Jackie, you want to share about our first partner? Mm -hmm. So one of the partners that Laura and I have been able to create quite a close connection with is Rachel Starkey, who operates an organization called For Her Dignity in Egypt. And it's such an amazing organization. For Her Dignity addresses period poverty in a few Middle Eastern countries and African countries. And now, what does this mean? Here in, in North America, we don't really think about what period poverty means, but in a lot of places, girls don't have access to menstrual products. And this actually can be the difference with them finishing school and having a better life and getting out of poverty, which is a really, really big issue. And this is something that Rachel has dedicated her life to, to addressing. Mm -hmm. And so the really cool thing about For Her Dignity is that Rachel partners with local women to go into rural communities to hand out something called Dignity Kits and to do a lot of uh, health education with women. So these Dignity Kits are filled with uh, reusable sanitary products. And with this health education, they also teach women how to make their own sanitary products and then also how to teach other women in their own community, communities how to make them as well. So it's this really beautiful ripple effect uh, where women empower other women and Rachel is facilitating this, but she's empowering local people to take ownership over their own lives and ownership over their um, like communities. Their communities. Yeah. Yeah. So we really, we really love what Rachel does with For Her Dignity. And the other cool thing about it is this education gives them access into rural communities and to, into nations that otherwise would have been unaccessible to them. And they can share message of, messages of transformation with these communities, which is something that we are very passionate about and we are honored to be supporting her in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. We love Rachel. Yeah. We really do. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to take you to an entire other area of the world, to Italy, where our partner George Werner works for an organization called El Aviva. So before I explain El Aviva to you guys, I want to share some interesting facts that George shared with us when we met him about um, Italy. So I have no clue, but apparently less than 1% of Italians identify as born-again Christians. And in Italy, 7,000 towns and villages have no church and no evangelical witness, which was just mind-blowing to me and Jackie mm -hmm. when, we, yeah. when we chatted with George and met him. Um, of the 1% that identify as Christians, very few of those are young adults. So there's an entire generation in Italy basically just waiting to meet Jesus and get the opportunity to be introduced to him. Um, El Aviva is the organization that George works for. It exists to elevate the lives of the churches, pastors, leaders, and communities they serve through the good news and the goodness of Christ. Um, they have a vision of seeing churches planted all across Italy and believe that young, born-again Italians will be instrumental in seeing this vision become a reality. So although George has lived full-time in Italy in the past, his current position is a full-time Canada-based position um, as the Director of Strategic Initiatives. And so his focus is on helping a network of churches become a church planting movement within Italy. So he goes back and forth between Italy and Canada quite a bit, and he's actually finally in Italy right now after months of COVID, you know, making that not possible. So he's very happy to be back, yeah. um, kind of doing his heart project in the country he loves. Um, so we encourage you guys to pray for George and his wife Eileen and mm -hmm. for all of our brothers and sisters in Italy. Um, many of them who become pastors do this in addition to full-time work. 
Um, so it's not that they quit their job to become a pastor, they add pastoring into their job. So just lifting them up in prayer would be so, so appreciated by them, and we really want to remember them yeah. when we spend time with the Lord in the morning. Yes, mm -hmm. totally. Our final partner that we want to talk to you about and share about is a food security and sustainable agriculture project in the Republic of Congo, and the individual that we support who is leading that, his name is Jesse Mitchell. And now a lot of you actually know Jesse personally, and if you don't, I hope that you get to know him uh, sooner or later because he is such an impressive and brilliant man. He, Jesse actually trained as a professional chef um, at the Marriott in downtown Calgary, and he also spent some time as the executive chef on Mercy Ships. And while he was uh, in this position on the Mercy Ships, he witnessed a lot of food, uh, food insecurity in, in parts of Africa, and he felt called by the Lord to leave his career in Canada and go to Africa and start working on um, things like sustainable agriculture and, and nutrition and, and what that looks like to work with locals. So God brought him to the Republic of Congo and Jesse is so cool. He actually lives in a rural community alongside local people and every day he works with them to do nutrition programs and feeding programs and he works with a local medical mission there and through these, um, through these feeding programs, they're also able to provide education on the importance of nutrition to mothers, which then actually changes or breaks the cycle of mal malnutrition. So the things that he's doing are so inspiring and we're mm -hmm. so excited to be partnering with him and really see firsthand how someone can use skills that they have here and have allow God to use that to build his kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's very inspiring. So Jesse's long-term goal is to work alongside local farmers to help them incorporate more nutritious and protein-dense crops into their farms. And we are with him in this goal. And we encourage you guys to be praying for Jesse and um, his work in, in the Congo. It's not easy. Uh, it can be quite um, isolating being there because he is very, very rural. It takes a long time. To, it takes a very long time to get there. Yeah. Um, so please keep Jesse in your prayers. And uh, yeah, we're yeah. excited to hopefully in the future have you get to know him more. Totally, yes. totally. And on that note, um, with any of these international partners, they all have newsletters that you could sign mm -hmm. up to. So if you want us to connect you to that so that you can hear more firsthand yes. from them, um, their updates, we're more than happy to point you in the right direction mm -hmm. to sign up. Because Jesse, he does. He has some pretty cool stories yes. about some crazy things that he's cooked there. Yeah. So <laughs> um, anyways, these are the partners that we currently support every month mm -hmm. financially and who we have committed to, to support. Yes. Um, there are so many more amazing ministries that we would love to support, but we just don't have the resources at this point. Yeah, we actually have a list of people that we would love to support as a church community, but we need people to give so that we can do that. Mm -hmm. We've talked with Pastor Dave and Pastor Jess, and they've talked with the board, and we refuse to take on people, take on ministries, unless we can give to them meaningfully. We would rather give a substantial amount um, to less people than uh, giving like $40 a month to a list of 30 or 40 people um, just so that we can, you know, for the sake of looking generous or impressive. Mm -hmm. we're, very, we, we're very committed to that. Mm -hmm. So I want to challenge each of you today to give to Kingdom mm -hmm. Partners. We have members in this community, like Jackie actually, yeah. who um, works in full-time ministry for an organization that combats human trafficking in Southeast Asia. Or a woman called Sarah Curdy, who is local to Calgary, many of you might know her, who works for an organization called Zoe Network that is doing amazing work. Or our guest speakers for next week, Kevin yeah. and Julia Garrett, who are just phenomenal people. Um, all these people are people we would love to be able to support, and so truly, the more we practice generosity, the more impact we can corporately have, which is just, it's really cool. It's really exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like Pastor Dave said earlier, our goal to raise for Kingdom Partners before the year is done is $50,000. Now we have already raised $20,000, which is so awesome, but we have 30000 to $30,000 left to raise. And now this might sound intimidating, but it is so doable. It is crazy. We can totally do this, you guys. So for some of us, I think donations like $200 or $400 feels like we just can't make it work. And that's okay. Some of us aren't in a place where we can just donate $200 right, just right now, right this second. But Laura's actually going to show you the power of breaking things down into smaller amounts. 
So donating $200 for the year, as Jackie gave us an example, is not that bad when you break it down into small amounts. So that means setting aside just under $17 a month. And if you're donating $400 to our annual Kingdom Partners goal, that's just under $34 a month. So I know some of you are students, I've been a broke student before, um, <laughs> and so because of that I also know that $17 a month is still a very accessible donation, um, even if you're a student, even if you're kind of in a rougher place. So um, if your generosity starts somewhere as simple as cutting out a few Starbucks drinks, or for all my young adult friends, not buying freshie before our young adults meetings on Sundays, Ooh. maybe packing a lunch, and I'm talking to me because okay. I get freshie. Yes. Um, anyways, that's like, that's a great place to start. And um, I think that's amazing because we're not only going to be giving, but we're going to be taking um, a further step in sacrificing the here mm -hmm. and now to build something eternal and something everlasting. So don't diminish the significance of giving anything at all. Imagine for a moment, church, how much more of an impact we could have if we all corporately chose to expand our generosity. So we encourage you to pray about how you can support Kingdom Partners um, and our ministry partners. And Jackie, do you want to share? Yeah, so when we were praying about what God wanted to share like today, yes, we wanted to share with you about our partners, but we also felt him put the passage Isaiah 58 on our hearts so strongly and we just want to read that and now I know at least for me that sometimes when we read scripture I, I tune out a little bit or I just read it with a very um, analytical mind but I encourage you to really reflect on these words and if that means for you you have to close your eyes and just listen then close your eyes if you have to follow along then follow along but these are powerful words that the Lord literally says to the Israelites, and I want us to reflect on this. Shout it aloud, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the descendants of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways, as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen, only a day for people to humble themselves? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is, is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen, to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them, and not turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry, and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness, and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way, Way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord and I will cause you to ride in triumph on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So church, let's together be a church that lives out this call from the Lord. Let's not be a people who only go to church on Sundays, who only pray about ourselves 
who get tunnel visioned on our own lives. May we be a church that lives out God's call to justice and to action. May we be a people that supports God's kingdom in prayer, in our actions, and with our finances. <laughs> Let me pray for you today as you've heard this, and I've, I've been watching and listening and intently asking the Lord, God, what would you have me to do? What's my role in all of this? How can I participate in this? And so I want to pray for you, maybe as you're just thinking, you've, you've heard the scripture, we've heard the word of the Lord today. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for how you're moving us, how you're stirring our hearts. I pray for every individual today that is just calling on you, asking you, Lord, would you reveal more of yourself to me so that I can make a difference in this world? Help me to be a part of the solution, not the problem. But God, I ask you, how can I go beyond what I've ever done before? Show me the way to do that, financially supporting it through prayer. God, we need you, we need your strength in our lives, but give us the opportunities that we need and may we be obedient today in Jesus' name. Listen, we're so glad you joined us today. Thanks, ladies. And, and uh, we have more information for you. Make sure you go to our website, Kingdom Partners. And the hotlines are ready right now <laughs> to receive your donation. Nothing like that. But anyway, make uh, a, a generous donation today. We're looking forward to seeing you again next week. We'll have Kevin and Julia Garrett with us. Thanks, everybody. Have an amazing week.